Boy, Rich reminded me of a good old Saturday night short track. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> Biggest story of the weekend. What did you think of the last lap of that nationwide race? I'm sure you've got some <laughs> opinions, Jimmy. And I've got lots of thoughts on it, but I want to take a look at it starting here from the white flag. Keselowski and Carl's on the outside racing here for the win. This is the last lap. Now Keselowski gets in the car here, way up the racetrack, over aggressive. Bam, he knocks in the car. That's the first time he touched Carl on that long fence. Well, you know what? Carl's not going to give up. Brad gives him the room. Here he comes down the back straightaway. This is exciting racing fans, but you know what? Brad steps over the line again. Here he comes. He starts to slide up. Look at where the 32 car is down on the racetrack. That's where Brad was supposed to be. He was a lot before. Carl says, give me room, give me room. Brad moves over, moves over. Carl says, I've had enough. Bam, into the wall he goes. The bad side of what happened though is this could have been avoided. And unfortunately, some innocent guys got collected in that wreck. Yeah, expensive for a lot of teams. Jimmy, you're not the only one with an opinion about this. We heard earlier on the show tonight, it was Sunday on Wind Tunnel, that Kevin Harvick said he would actually punch Carl Edwards in the mouth if he was Brad Keselowski. Jimmy, you have a little bit of experience with that. You know, Kevin, he knows you can't physically touch another competitor. Listen, I had a similar feud starting in 2001 with Kurt Busch and ending in 2003. It, I was watching the race from the couch with my dogs at my house. I bumped Kurt Busch at Phoenix in 01. Now, you know, he had an option to save it or spin out. He spun out. Well, then in 2002, racing for the win here at Bristol, he bumps me. Well, you know what? He goes on and wins the race. Oh boy. Well, a few months later in Indianapolis, I remember what happened at Bristol. And as he was driving by me, oops, turn three. Hey, he gave me the old famous signal for that. You know, here you go. Well, the whole year goes by. He tries to cut my tire down here in Michigan. And after the race, he said some bad things about my family. That was it. I smacked him. And I said, you know what? That's it. NASCAR says, you know what, Spence, you've got to take a week off. Well, I'll tell you what, fans, my point is, these things can go on and on for a long time. But thanks to Don Coble, Kurt Busch and I, we're friends now. And, you know, I wish I could sit down with Carl and Brad in the same room. I could fix it. I've been there before. Well, Jamie, we've already had one psychologist on the show. I don't know if we need to, but if your therapy session doesn't happen, looking forward, where does this end? Does it continue in both series as it already has the past two seasons? Yeah, it does. You know, there, there's two really interesting things coming out of, out of this. The nationwide championships on the, on the line is essentially a blood battle. But Carl's racing to get into this chase. If Brad wanted to hit Carl where it really hurt, well, one thing, one time into the fence and Carl would be out of the top 12 and out of the chase. And the saga continues. But you know what? I'll be watching it. Yeah, Jimmy, safe to say we will all be watching it. Thank you very much. And if it's okay, I'm going to keep your cigar if that's all right. That's okay. You can have it. All right. Great stuff as always.